Hi, I'm Tina Murray, and I am so excited to be on the online prosperity program today, where I'm talking to Prosper about how not only can you create your own life, but you can design you so that your life aligns with the one that you want. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, and today we've got the one and only amazing lifestyle designer, Tina Murray. Tina, how are you doing? I'm awesome. Thank you, Prosper. Lovely to be here. I love chatting with you. Fantastic. Even though we're chatting for the hundredth time this year, this is going to be the most amazing episode we've ever created because I know you're packing in heat. Now, if you're watching this show for the first time, I want to introduce you to this amazing lady. Uh, she has not only helped me figure out what I want in life. She's helped me design a course in my life. Now, if you've been following me and you think I'm it, then what you're about to hear after I say this is just going to blow your little socks away. Now, Tina Murray has been designing lives for over 30 years. For some of you, she's been doing it before you were born. And she actually uses all her skills as a qualified interior designer to create personal growth solutions as a mentor, as an author, a professional speaker. And she specializes in change, a lot of innovation because she goddamn changed the way I was looking at things. And um, yeah, I had to have a DNA test because I don't think the person I was before, I'm still that one person. So with all the positive psychology that she um, can impart on you, I'm hoping that she will redesign your life today. Tina, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, pleasure. And thank you so much. I love that you are checking out your DNA because that session that we had when you had that bit of a um, light bulb moment was just sensational to watch. And I love that you're still seeing the benefits of it because that's what, that's what life's about understandable so you've been doing this for 30 years all right can mm -hmm. you just give us a brief on how you got started and who is tina and why are we watching you today yeah sure so my background is interior design i've also got a degree in fashion design so innovation is definitely my thing in creativity but those design jobs have always for me been about psychology so if you think about when you're designing your house how do you feel? How stressful is it? How hard is it to go through change? So I've found that a lot of what my work is, apart from managing people's behaviours and how you make them feel in a space, which is what my job is to create amazing spaces that you feel great in and brings out the culture you want. But how do you feel when you're renovating and how stressed are you? Most people cannot handle change. And my job for 20 odd years as an interior designer has been to help people manage change, to get over that fear, to work out with clarity what it is that they want. So in design terms, create a brief. What do you want for your life? What are, we, what are the concepts? Like think out there, wow, what do I really want to do? Then document it. Then get someone to help you build it or build it yourself. So go, just going through the processes of what it is that you want and how can you build that to create the life you want understandable so obviously thank you so much for that you know profound um wisdom that you've just dropped right at the start we might as well end this show because <laughs> that already is good enough as it is now you know when you're talking about change humans are mm -hmm. creatures of habit okay when you are coming in and telling them to change their exterior if the interior mm -hmm. is not corresponding to what is happening outside there's a lot mm -hmm. of friction Right. Mm -hmm. So walk us through what is normally happening with your clients when they then come to you specifically for your services. Mm. Unfortunately, often when people first come to me, they've actually gone through a crisis. So a lot of the people I do work with are people in their 40s and 50s. And the two major crises are that they've gone through a marriage breakup or they, their work is at a point where they're like, you know what, I've done everything I thought I was meant to do. I've created this life which externally looks amazing. People are jealous of my car, my house, kids go to good schools, all that stuff that we think that we're working towards. But they've realised that it's not actually fulfilling them. There's still something missing. And so they're almost at a crisis point often when people come to me. 
And so we will work out what it is that is where this discomfort's coming from. And as you said, nearly always, it's that lack of alignment with what's happening on our interior, with what's happening on the exterior. So we, so we will work through what it is that people really want. Now, to me, that comes down to what your values are. First and foremost, what do you value? And as you know, when we had a chat, one of the ways I get people to work that out very quickly is to take them straight from now to what do they want in 50 years time? Where do they want to be in 50 years? Who's around them? What sort of environment do they want to be in? Now, normally, once we've done that, it's taken you from the everyday life you're in now. And the reason I don't do five year jumps is because we're still caught up in every day. If you think about it, you've got a young daughter. If I say to you, what do you want in five years? A lot of that will be around when well, my daughter will be at school. I need to be living near where she is going to school. I want to have a great community for her. It's very caught up in the everyday stuff, which isn't a big jump from where you're at now. If we suddenly jump 50 years, your daughter's immediate problems aren't in that picture. And you're looking as almost a helicopter down on your life. And for a lot of people, they do recognise that it might be a deathbed. Who did I want around me at that time? And for most people, when they do that, they come down to a number of things. It comes down to the people around them, the type of people that they want, necessarily not who it is, but it also might come down to what their purpose was in life. And for many of us, it's, it's both of those. But once we take people out of this every day and take them to this higher perspective, their whole perspective changes. And then you reverse engineer it all the way back down to, okay, how do I make that happen? Great stuff. That's, that's a lot of work. And I remember when we had a chat, I mean, for viewers that, um, you know, catching in for the first time, I want us to revisit that clarity, um, you know, sort of session that we did, because when you are moving either as an entrepreneur or as a human, um, you would notice even when you're driving, the windshield in front of you is bigger than the rear view mirror. You have to have 2020 vision of where it is that you are going so that you don't collide with anything else or you just don't get lost. How important is clarity? First of all, in one, in, in a person and maybe in whatever activities, either in business and family or in everything else that they touch. Mm. Clarity is everything. When you know yourself from the inside out, and that doesn't just mean the good bits. Unfortunately, it needs the bad bits as well. You need to be aware of where you've got some stumbling blocks. When you do know yourself from the inside out, it is so much easier to make decisions. You and I both know we make millions of decisions every day. Most of them we're not even conscious of. But there's probably one or two a day that we are conscious of. And we want people to be able to make those decisions based on who they are and what actually fits and aligns with them. Now, I know when you've got other people that you need to consider, that has to come into it, of course, too. But we've all been in places where we've made decisions because someone else might have, we've felt influenced to do something for someone else. And there's nothing wrong. By all means, we need to help other people. But if we do that when it goes against our values or we feel like we're losing something in that equation, it's going to come back and bite us. We, we actually can't let that go. So even though we need to do take consideration of other people around us, we need to be very conscious of why we're doing what we're doing. Now, what I find when we have clarity is a lot of that monkey chatter disappears. So as an example, I very rarely have monkey chatter because it becomes quite black and white. Does that suit my values, who I am, what it is I'm trying to achieve. Yes, tick. Okay, I can move forward with it. Does it not? No, why doesn't it? Is there something I can change about that? Do I even want to waste the time trying to work out if I can change it? No, I don't need to worry about it anymore. So it makes that decision process much simpler. And I do meditate and I do use other techniques to help with that clarity. And that's part of what I teach my clients. But it really is that simple. We have so much stress around us and so many choices. So we need to have a barometer by which we can judge all these decisions which are cho and choices which are coming up to us every day. 
Because if you think about it as human beings, we're not made to have this many choices. Back in, when we were in the Stone Age, you know, you, what, you went out and killed a wildebeest and then you came home and you fed it to your family and if you're lucky you might have had some sex, you go to bed, you get up in the morning and do the same thing. There's not that many choices in that day and these, today we're bombarded by so much information and we're getting it from so, even just messages. How many different channels do we get messages from? Facebook, Voxer, Instagram, like people can contact us in so many different ways and we, we need a barometer in which to chew through all of that and see what's really important to us and then make decisions on the important stuff. Understandable. And I, <clears throat> I really appreciate you brought in the, um, the idea of choice. Well, first of all, I wouldn't even know how to hunt for burgers. I wouldn't know where to start. So I'm really happy the, hung <laughs> the burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. <laughs> And at the end of the and Hungry Jacks, if you're watching this, then send me a couple of burgers. But what we now have is a scenario of Tina. It's always been like this, you know, and people really do not want to move from where they were to actually really go from where they, they are. It's like people are a glutton for punishment. How do you help or how do you let people realize that there's more fulfillment, there's more passion and love out there when that's all they've ever experienced and they have not known anything better? Mm. It's interesting because I find it very easy when people meet me. I often get people say to me, you've just got a spark about you. And so people can see I'm living in my authentic self and that I am being true to myself. So I'm, definitely not better looking than most people, but this energy that comes from within is because most of the time I'm fully aligned with what I'm doing. And so that does send out an energy into the world. So when I'm meeting people, I often will have people say, what is it that you do? Because I want some of that. And, and that's not because I'm up myself. I'm not sharing that because I'm up myself. It's the, the thing is, when you are in alignment, there is so much more clarity and you can move through with purpose. So people actually seeing that it can be lived that way is a big impetus for uh, people to work with me. But the biggest thing is you need to want to change. You need to know that you do want to do something differently. Now, I wrote a book many years ago, which is all about how get to get in in alignment uh, to how to recognize what your values and needs are and the people who actually do the exercises in it are the ones who get the most benefit on it a lot of people say oh it's a really nice re book to read my mum was an english teacher so i can probably write okay <laughs> but um the ones who are getting the value from it are the ones who are doing the exercise now i had a guy recently who rang me up he'd bought my book and he was reading it and the next day he actually rang me and said I have spent four hours on page seven of your book. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to check what page four or seven is. <laughs> and it was, it was on his values. And he said, I actually just want to speak to you about this because he said, I should have been doing this years ago. I can't believe how much clarity I've got and I'm still going through this how much clarity I've got about the effect this stuff's had on my relationships. I've just realized why my girlfriend has been annoying me for the last couple of years because there's this one thing that she does and I couldn't work out why it bothered me so much, but now I understand myself better. So I understand it. Now what happens now that he understands why his girlfriend for one of his words was annoying him the beauty of him understanding himself is it's not such a trigger anymore because he understands in himself why her actions are triggering something in him. And he is now aware of it. He knows why. And he can take the actions that he wants to, to, to manage that situation, whether it means he talks clearly with her about it or it doesn't matter anymore because he goes, you know what? I accept that about myself. All right. That's, I, that, I accept that about her as well. Great stuff. Well, obviously values are things that, you know, people would never change and should continuously, um, you know, check in with just so they know they're in alignment and they're actually doing things that would help them have a happier existence. Now, 
amongst us living as humans, we do come across a lot of fear. We do come across a lot of unknowingness on how to proceed and we just really let the lizard brain um, you know, take control. What, what is your perception on facing fear and really living with your true courage and your true authentic mm. self? I, I love that you talk about it as the lizard brain because that's exactly it. It is something that's there to protect us. You know, we, we do need fear. It's a healthy response, but it's not used healthily for most of the times when we feel fearful in our life. Now, for me, I come across it from a number of different angles. Number one is to recognize what you're fearful of. And that's not always easy because we get caught up in it. We get caught in the drama of it. Our body takes over. It's, you know, biological response. So it's about getting people to recognize when they are fearful and being able to stop and step back from it. So it's almost like as a designer, I am looking down into a space and I am planning that space out holistically. I'm not looking at one little corner of the room. I'm looking at the whole room. What I'm asking people to do when they're stepping back is to do the same thing, to look at what does that fear really represent for them? What is it that maybe is something from their past, which it's triggering or it's the unknown. And as a designer, Fear of the unknown is the biggest thing that I come up against when I'm working with companies and managing their people through change. But when we recognize the fear, then we can start to talk to ourselves about what that fear really is. And using questions like, if I don't do this, what is my life going to look like? Can I accept not doing anything about this? Am I prepared to take the steps to move forward to do something about this? There's a whole lot of different things where, where we step back just that little bit and start to ask ourselves some questions that we can get a better understanding of whether we actually want to push through that fear or not and how important that fear is to us. But the biggest thing I've uh, seen, I've had the fortunate and misfortune to have grown up with a family member who was very fearful. And so I very much am aware of how fear can hold us back. So when we can recognize how much it holds us back and how much it affects every part of our life, then it gives us an idea about, okay, is, am I going to stop at this point and not jump over that precipice? Or am I going to take that leap of faith? Now, I liken it to years and years ago, I was skydiving and there was a guy who did not want to get up in that plane. He booked, he was there, he was ready to go and he's like, no, I cannot do it. And his whole body, you know, the poor guy, I really felt sorry watching him. It was horrendous. He was so fearful, but he knew he wanted to do it. Give him credit. He got in that plane and he jumped. When he landed... He was so exhilarated because he'd overcome this fear and he had a wow of a time. And I would like to hope that when he has stressful situations in the future where he's not sure whether he should literally take that jump, that he'll look at it and go, you know what? It wasn't that bad. And wow, I learned stuff about myself. I experienced something. I am proud of myself. I had an amazing jump, but I wasn't as scared as him. So I had a great time. But to see the exhilaration in him was sensational. And that's what we should be taking every time we're fearful, looking at, if I jump, what? how am I going to turn out? And in the past when I've jumped, has it really been as bad as I thought? Because most of the time we're worrying about stuff that doesn't even eventuate. Wow. Wow. I, um, yeah, we, we did a, 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 a skydive to not long ago and yeah. um, I could totally relate to your story there because it's right at that moment when you're about to jump, when you actually realize, you know what, it's all or nothing. And <laughs> the, the, the whole dopamine comes and overwhelms you and you now just start enjoying the process. And, and I can, I was in his shoes right there. 
you know, <laughs> I'm African. We don't jump as high as anything other than this. So, do you know what I mean? If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right? So, that way, that man found fulfillment in what was happening in his life. But other people would never have to experience that. Now, my question to you is, you help people find that fulfillment. Fulfillment. What is fulfillment, actually? Because some people would probably be in a room full of fulfillment, but they don't even recognize that, oh, this is fulfillment. Do you know? Yeah. And, and what can people actually do to find or get to that place if it's possible? Mm. Yeah. I, I'd like to change the word to contentment, even happiness. I, I'm a completely happy person, but to me, it's not about these levels of extreme. Too often, I think we're looking for always being up here. Now, life doesn't go like that. All of us know that we have stuff happen to us in life. Some of it we can control. Sometimes just stuff happens. And yeah, you know, I look back on my life. I'm divorced. I've been made redundant. I've been through failed IVF. There's a whole lot of things that I expected were going to work in my life, which haven't. And they're not unusual experiences. Most people have gone through at least one of them by the time they're my age. And life has its ups and downs and there's other people we've got to consider. So for me, it's about realizing that you can be content and content or fulfillment as you're using as a term is about being more on a straighter path, which means you're not getting these big highs and lows because you're not caught up in the drama. You don't need the drama to, to live a great life and the drama is not going to help you live a fulfilling life. But then on top of it, when you've got this base level of contentment and comes from knowing yourself from the inside out, those drops aren't nearly as far. So recently my mum passed away and I love her to bits, but there was a big part of that process where I never would have dropped to the really deep levels of depression about it because I could see it was part of the process of life. I had enough inner strength to see the beauty in part of the time that we spent together in her last few days. There was so much that I got out of that. So even amongst the horrendous bit of losing my mum and knowing I'll never see her again, there was beautiful experiences in that. And I think when you can recognize that life has those highs and lows and sometimes they can come at exactly the same time, that it helps you to ma maintain more of that consistency. But again, coming back to what our values and needs are, my mum and I made sure we said everything we needed to say. And I'm lucky that I knew that she was going to go. So we did have those conversations. And I know it doesn't always happen, unfortunately, for people like that. But it meant we really made the most of our time together. And so I don't have regrets about something I didn't say to her. I made sure I knew what I needed to say or do or contribute. And I'm by no means the best nurse. She'd be the first person to tell you that. But I did the best I could. And so I can forgive myself for not being a better nurse. That's what the real nurses are there for. But I did the best I could. So it's part of having an understanding of what that baseline is for you, which comes from your interior, what it is that you want, and how situations um, you can line up with that and recognizing there are highs and lows. But if you go into it knowing who you are, it's easier to pull yourself back up to that level, which is ultimately fulfillment. Understandable. Well, for starters, I think we probably had this conversation, but really sorry for the loss of your mom. Um, I, I went through that when I was 17 too. And um, I've always looked at it favorably because it opened up the doors for me to actually be here had my mom been at home i'll probably be mama's boy there and not have worked <laughs> as hard so kudos to yeah. your mom and um you know she she really did well and brought up such an intelligent and giving lady that you have turned out to become so thank you so much yeah, for that awesome. now thank you you know just to sort of wind this up um all of this can be all good and nice, but if nobody does anything about it, it's all a high sounding nothing. Um, mm -hmm. 
how important is taking action and I do know at some point it's, you know, history is actually being written every single time that you do something different or you turn a leaf or something like that. How important really is putting it all together and really going out and giving it your best shot? It is everything. And I think when you know who you are and know what your purpose is, it's really easy to do it. It's so easy for me to get out of bed every morning and do what I'm doing because it aligns with my 50 year plan and everything I do, I try to align with my 50 year plan and taking that action is the most important thing. When you can look back at the end of each day and go, wow, I did that. Or at least I got some of it done. Every step is a step further towards where you want to go. But it comes back to having that clarity. What is it that you want? And taking action is key. There's no point having dreams if you're not going to do something about them. Understandable. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Now, Tina, obviously people are sitting at the edge of their seat right now. They've been, in, you know, <laughs> really, really been listening to you and they're engaged and wondering how you can actually help them design it, create it and live it. How can people get a hold of you there, Tina? Yeah, the easiest way is my website, tinamurray.com. And also on Facebook, you can find me under that name as well. And my group, Create the Life You Want. Understandable. Well, you have been empowering men and women to actually, con you know, get connected with their interior so that they too can be, do and have a life that's off a happier existence. And our values correspond with that because I wake up every single day just to make sure every business that I talk to gets profitable and they actually enjoy working in that business. What sort of last words would you part with, um, you know, just so that our viewers would really, you know, put the nail on that coffin and, you know, send it away wherever they, you know, their hopes, their fears or whatever it is that they've been putting away for quite a while, just so that they can just get up and do something about it. Yeah. Designing your life is only going to happen if you do take action. But the first part of that action is getting in touch with your interior. So design you from the inside out and you'll find that you'll have the skills and the tools and the passion to move forward to create the life you want. Understandable. Well, you've left us with a lot of clarity and I think people that are watching this are actually fulfilled. You've raised their passion and their love and zest for their life. I can't thank you enough for your time, your expertise and your story that you've left with us here today. Uh, Tina, thank you so much for your time. Prosper as always. It's just been amazing. It's so much fun. I love working with you. Thank Great. you for the opportunity to chat with your guys. Great stuff. We should do this again. Sounds good.